The 1964 Mercury Marauder by AMT Ertl. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, model kit builders, and say, are you crazy about a Mercury? Well, I sure hope so, because this is the second week of our 1964 Mercury model kits. And this time around, I put away the little Mercury comment and brought out the big boy here with the Mercury Marauder for 1964. And this is a really cool kit. If you're a slot car builder, this also makes a really good slot car kit, as would the Mercury Comet from last week. So now, without further ado, let's do one thing before we take a look at this, and that is to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first one to see it, because YouTube will tell you, hey, Trevor made a new video, check it out. Now let's get this thing up to 100 likes so that this video goes way up in that Google search, way up there. <laughs> And now without further ado, let's go down to the Monster Hobbies showroom and rip open the lid on this great beauty and see what's in the box. Welcome back to the Monster Hobbies Mercury showroom. Last week we were looking at the small little Mercury Comet. And this week we get to see the big 1964 Mercury Marauder. So from the smallest car to the biggest car. Here we go. Now uh, this kit of course was built by RC2 when AMT was under RC2, uh, but it's an earlier kit, of course. Not sure when it came up, but part of that early 60s series. There really is not much on this box, other than it's a skill level two for ages 10 and up, requires glue and paint, uh, from 2005. So that's when this got reissued. It is a cool kit, I have built one before goes together easy as we will see. So I'm going to pull this off the top and we'll take a look at these really folded up Marauder instructions. So now we return once again to the Mercury showroom right down here at Monster Hobbies. This week we are going to look at the 1964 Mercury Marauder. Last week we were looking at the 64 Mercury Comet. So this is the big brother to that Comet. Now let's just take the top off. Wait, wait, before we do that. This kit came out by RC2 in 2005. As you can tell, there is not very many uh, pictures of this thing on the side of the box. Just the interior engine and the rear three-quarter, as well as the front. But check this side out. There is nothing there. What was the art department thinking? <laughs> Just fell asleep that day or what? So anyway, we've got a skill level 2 kit, ages 10 and up, glue and paint required. Now this model came out back in the early 60s from the AMT days as we'll see in the kit. So there's a lot of customizing bits in here, but it all mounts on a one punch underbody. So we'll just pull the lid off. We'll move that out of the way. There's our highly folded instructions. Just move those parts again. Okay, this is actually a three-in-one customizing kit. And, ooh, sneeze down there. Okay, so as you can see, the instructions are pretty cool. This again would make an awesome slot car. See, there's body screws right there. But before we look at that part, uh, big fold out on the instructions. So here is the basic assemblies. So you have a stock engine with all the parts are solid black, the numbers, and the racing are clear or white, or whatever, however you want to do that. Okay, so you get your chrome parts. So you got stock air cleaner, or you could put on these dual pressure pots, plus the blower, the supercharged engine, and all that stuff. That's all your, your racing and custom. Um, the headers are the same. So yeah, 
This has got the metal rod in the front, so it's got the hole in the engine block and the uh, oil pan. You could paint your um, metal axles black so that they'll disappear underneath the undercarriage, visually disappear under the undercarriage. So then here we've got our wheels and they mount with wheel backs, go through the tire and then you've got your choice of the stock wheel covers or these custom ones with the spinner knockoffs. There, there is like a racing option for deep dish mag wheels, or uh, sorry, reverse chrome wheels like the Beach Boys sing about, right? Uh, then there's a horn you put in, there's an axle horse which mounts under, you get these front disc brakes, or drum brakes, pardon me, and then a rear end cover for custom and traction bars. Then uh, here's your interior. Now this again is a tub, so that again is a 60s type of mold. Uh, you get these cool custom seats and a telephone. <laughs> Back before cell phones, you know, they actually have a physical telephone in there. The record players in. So you can thank all the customizer guys back in the 1960s for what we have now in cars. Because they, this never came stock. So these guys would put it in, like George Barris and Gene Winfield and all those great customizers would add this stuff in because they were way ahead of the curve. Problem is, um, when you got a record player in there, you hit a bump with your car and what? <laughs> so you can't really listen to your records as you're going down the road. You had to park somewhere to listen to them. They would be 45s, 45 RPM little records. Remember those guys? Okay, so then you get this uh, cut down steering wheel for um, sports. That was much like a jet instrument panel thing. I think, uh, I don't know if you can do those anymore. I don't know if they're legal or illegal. But there's a circular stock steering wheel. You get the custom gauges, tachometer, mirror, fire extinguisher, and optional roll bar for your racing. Slot car guys, take note. <laughs> and then here is the body going together. So the interior tub. There are some snap washers in here that go on the pegs. The custom headrests, firewall, radiator, and of course a hood. They did have this metal clip that clipped underneath a tab on the body in there. I have never seen anybody use those and I've tried. Open the hood, close the hood, the clip goes flying airborne. There's the, I'm showing you the clip. So if you had success with that metal clip, let me know in the comments below because I couldn't get it to work. Okay, so here's the body. So you get this hood ornament that pops in. Um, the front grill. Now note, this also is much like the Plymouth Belvedere and the 63 Chevy. So. Quite a styling cue back then. There's the rear bumper and grill, and it also has those little fins much like the Comet did. Okay, so here's the racing for your NASCAR fans and uh, slot car racers and whatnot. So you get this great big hood strap that belts right under the front of the hood, and headlight covers to cover up your glass. And like I said, the screws underneath, so you could put the slot car motor and stuff in the chassis and stock tail lights. And now we get into the wonderful world of customizing. So here you get bullet grills, bullets, the Adonis grill, Lucas lenses, custom hood ornaments, the aerials, um, side pipe with special exhaust plates, you get tuck and roll wheel well covers, 58 Chevy or Cadillac, however you wanna do that, 59 Caddy parking lights you can use in the front, custom grills, deck scoops, this big rolled pan in the back with either the Adonis grill or the tube type grill, more 58, 59 Cadillac, whatever, stop lights, and you get these Lucite flat tail lights there's a scissor jack and a trophy. Parts are numbered in order of assembly. It is not necessary to use all the parts shown. Try different combinations and locations before you start cementing. Oh, and you also get these really cool fender skirts. So, without further ado, let's go down and take a look at the plastic parts for the 64 Mercury Marauder. 
So now we have another cool 1964 Mercury model kit. This time around it's the Marauder by AMT. And they included this nice piece of cardboard in here so that our roof wouldn't get crunched when we go and move it around in the box. And again, this kit, popular for 64, has that, that hardtop convertible look to it with the bar across here and the roof kicking down to make this thing look like a steel convertible top, much like the 57 Ford retractable, or sorry, the 59 Ford retractable that I reviewed earlier in this series. Now this again is a screw bottom kit, so it's got the peg and pole types that would go through the underneath of the chassis to hold it together. So if you're a slot car guy, this is a perfect body for you for mounting 25th scale slot car components. Now in here is molded a bunch of holes. Those you can drill right through for your spotlights and rear view mirrors and whatnot. There's two back here for antennas. So you get a couple of good options. There's some plastic coming out here. So I use uh, the chisel blade. I forget what number that is. Just to chisel these out and some sandpaper to sand the smooth inside so it doesn't interfere with the bodies. Uh, the bodies mount to the chassis. Then here are these double lines on either side. That's for your radi or your uh, firewall to click into. And then if you look at the front here, there's a couple of holes for your radiator shroud. The detail on the AM kits is nice and deep, unlike the Lindbergh models, which is a little more softer. You've got that nice molding in there. You can sand that off if you're doing a custom or whatever. Or you can add in some bare metal foil to make it look really nice. There's the Mercury emblems. The sad part is there's a little sink mark right in here. And that's a bit difficult to fill. Especially because you got to fill it and then go in with this complex shape in here. So I don't really have too many good advice <laughs> for getting that together. There's a Mercury script on the trunk lid, as well as the emblem, and a little bit of that trim along the bottom for chrome plating. It has these nice little bars on here. And then your door handles are molded in place on this kit, but that was typical of that style and that era of model building. So a very nice, clean, crisp body. And here we have our hood which also has the Mercury emblem molded in there. And if we turn it over, you have the mat in here, the fireproof matting, as well as the cross braces. And there are some mold marks in here, which will need to be cleaned up with a bit of putty on this one, and your number 16 hobby blade on the other ones. Now the undercarriage of this model kit is molded as one piece. Of course, you've got to cut that part off. But this uses the bent-out perimeter frame, which was very common for Fords of this era. Then you got your A-arms molded in place. Your exhaust pipes are molded in for dual exhaust. Um, and the differential, of course, and your rear exhaust pipes and mufflers. And these holes go all the way through for the screw bottom of this car. Another component to this chassis are the two holes here. So you can either have it at stock height or lowered down for a low rider effect. And inside the fender aprons, there is a typical Ford bag style windshield whopper, windshield uh, fluid tank here. Don't want me say windshield whopper. Maybe that'll be a new, we new meme or something. Okay, anyway, so there's some more of the components inside there, and I do believe this little sunken part is where the battery would mount. Our interior tub is molded in the typical 1964 fashion, although the bucket seats and that are not molded in into this tub, which is nice. It gives you the option of custom seats for the front. The back, though, you are stuck, but it does have some nice pleated interior panels as well as all the winders and stuff, which are molded pretty flush to this, because that's just how it is with these interior tubs. Now this is a nice bit of molding on here. One of the things that AMT did was to get around the fact that they molded in the rear seats, was to make the front bucket custom seats 
The upholstery matched the back, the patterns. These would be the stock front seats, the stock buckets. Bucket seats were pretty popular in the 60s. And then here we have a lower type assembly with the hoses for that and a scissor jack. Now we have a fairly long parts tree. We have our engine block here with the little cutouts molded in, same as under the oil pan, so that our metal axles can go right through the engine block. That was a typical thing to do with 1960s model kits. My addition here has a lot of flash on the parts. Anyway, here's our exhaust manifolds. This, of course, is our firewall. And it's got this groove out of here. There was a metal clip that came with the kit back in the day. I think it's still in this one but it clips under the hood so that the hood will be able to swing open. These are retaining circles in here for our interior. Then of course we've got our air cleaner, fan, battery, uh, water for from the radiator, right? Then we have the intake manifold and the cylinder heads and of our coil and distributor molded as a one piece. There's a trophy here there's a fan belt for the blower and here's our typical fan belt it kind of turned there there's our radiator wall and then these are custom pieces this is the rear pan for the back or the front i can't remember and then got some side spears and our trophy there and this thing that looks like a little tv or something our next components will allow you to build this car as a NASCAR version, but you're on your own to find the decals. Anyway, this is the roll cage and some of the braces for it. And of course there you have your padded end on the roll cage, so this is where the driver's going to be. And there's a little bit of an extra cage there to protect on side impacts on that one door. These are belts to hold the hood down, and these are your wheel backs for the extended wheels as well as a fire extinguisher. Now we get into some very nice custom and interior components. In fact, these are pretty much all custom components. There's a rolled pan, seat belts for the race car, and these little straps in here. I think these are standard lap belts. Then we have these really cool headrests. These are headrest inserts for those, our wheels, uh, fender skirts, then for a special option, you've got an exposed brake drum here, the dual cal or the single caliper rear brakes. There's a horn, that's a stock piece, the license plate. There's a telephone. These are uh, tuck and roll fender skirt inserts. There's one there. A uh, bunch of bullets and things, uh, all kinds of cool stuff gonna have to look in the instruction sheet to see what everything is. Here we have some more gray parts for the kit. This of course is our dashboard which has some very nice detail molded in. Now you could actually saw the roof off and use this. This is a convertible top with the top down. It should make a really cool kit. And then we have the roll cage, the back portion of our roll cage in there. And our final little gray component here is the steering wheel. It was in this bag and it was stuck in the upholstery with a piece of tape. So I'm just going to leave it in the bag for now. But it is the three-spoke style steering wheel, the stock version. And it is uh, pretty basic, but it will get the job done. So now we get into my most favorite part of all these model car kits, the chrome tree. So we've got our rear bumper here. There's a little bit of flash inside where the rear taillights go, which will have to be taken out. Again, we've got 1964 molded into our license plates. So you could paint these all to look like a museum license plate for your collection, or you can scrape these off with your number 16 hobby blade, cover them over with decals from oh, all your other model kits, because by now <laughs> you got a big pile of decals in a box somewhere. Uh, the headlights are molded in place. You will need a black wash in here to bring out the details. Uh, now, I'll point out some of these things. This is a cover for your differential. These are the custom wheels. These are the stock 
wheels and hubcaps, I guess. Then you got some lake pipes here and a bunch of chrome bits. This little car here is for one of the trophies. Uh, you got your valve covers, chrome ones. Custom grills, front and back. Some more of the custom grills. These, if you turn them around, are headlights for here, and these are tail lights for in your back. I'll just turn this parts tree around so we can see a little better. And now here you got uh, your headlights, and these look like 58 Chevy type tail lamps, or Cadillac ones maybe. You could use, there's four of them. And of course we're going to be looking for the red plastic bits. And then you got spotlights and other things down here. So quite a lot of parts that you could use on many other kits. And now the stock bumpers here mount through the body uh, where your screws are going to go. And now in another bag we have this chrome steering wheel. This must have fallen off in the parts tree and AMT stuck it in this bag for us. This mounts on a special column shift that was in the gray pieces. It's very hard to see in the bag, but this is a airline style steering wheel. The ring has been cut down, so it's just got the hand grips right there. Now here we have our typical glass from 64 molded in as a one piece with these rails that connect the front windshield with the no drop windows to the rear glass with the little holes here for of course mounting through the body. Now if you don't want to see these when you take your car body here and flip them over and look through the window upside down this way you'll see those rails going across in there. You know if you don't want that just take your hobby saw and cut off here and here and then you should be able to glue that just up in here without it looking horrible. Now there's a lot of cool little glass components in here. Of course we've got our red tree for red tail lights and then we also have our clear tr uh, glass tree here for these cool bars that are in there as well as little parking and headlight things and remember I said there was like a 58 Chevy tail lights these are for in the front and then you've got red ones here if you want those in the back and then of course these are tail lights and then we've got our stock tail lights here now the only tire options we actually have are stock tires these are the firestone supremes and they're uh, very nicely molded there's um, some tread pattern around the outside here the name is on the tires and then our actual tread where it's going to hit the road. They're just fine lines that encircle the tire. And our final components to this entire kit are the two metal axles and these screws which will screw in the bottom. Now these screws are uh, slot screws but they also have a little bit of a Phillips head in there so you could use two different screwdrivers to get them in. And that completes our review of the AMT Ertl 1964 Mercury Marauder. And wasn't that a great review of this 1964 Mercury Marauder? And I sure hope that you liked it and subscribed and shared this video with all your friends and family. But no, I do hope you like it. And if you want to find one of these things, go check it out on eBay, on garage sales, at your local hobby shop and I don't know round two might re-release this thing coming up if it hasn't done so already you know when I was sleeping <laughs> and don't forget to like subscribe and share this video with all your friends and family pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video you are the first to know about it and now let's get this video up to 100 likes so that it goes high high up in that Google search engine and until next week we will see you down here at the Monster Hobbies showroom.